Buses, Peggy, they're safer. <laughs> Stats. Statistics, old boy. It's a breakdown of my territory. I know just where my casual and my regular buyers are. I've been wanting to get my teeth into something like this. You ought to try bringing sandwiches. <laughs> <laughs> it's the age of science, John. You should take an interest in these. I've been getting along all right without them. Have you, old boy? Oh, boy, I've never had it so good. You saw it when I 
bought my paper, my new Anglia. What's that you're saying? You saw me park it over there. It's gone. It may have been taken by mistake. Listen to me, Alfie. Did you see anyone near it? No, no. Oh, I've been too busy. Oh. Surely yes. you must have... I parked it over there. Worry too much, sir. We recover 80% of all stolen cars within 48 hours. Uh, Ford Anglia, you said. What about the others? Well, there are people who make a business of converting cars, you know. Sometimes they get away with it. What happens? Well, they change the look of your car and supply it with the logbook and number plates of a smashed up car of the same make. It's a well organized business. Oh, I may never get it back. I suppose that's why you insure them. Now, sir, have you a phone at your home address? Our most expensive free samples. You still have to pay me for it. Had a good day? Yeah, not bad. Are they asleep? Mm, it's after eight. Daddy. Hmm, I thought so. Daddy. Hey, you should be asleep. After they landed on the moon, Daddy, what happened? I'll tell you tomorrow. But did they get back to Earth? Yeah, of course. How? In their methylated dioxide plastic suits. Oh, I see. Come on now. Sandra's asleep. Mustn't wake her. Bed now. Story tomorrow. Good night, Daddy. Good night. I hope you can get them back to Earth for your sake. Anne. Hmm? Anne, leave that. What's the matter? The Anglia's gone. Don't be silly. Taken from outside Burgess, stolen. I've been to the police. Johnny, are you sure? I left it outside Burgess. A couple of hours later, it was gone. Yes, so someone might have taken it by mistake. <laughs> the only mistake was that I never... Uh, haven't we got any cigarettes? We smoked that tin last night. Oh, what did the police say? They said we had a good chance of getting it back, eventually. Oh, we need it this week. Couldn't we manage to hire a car or something? Well, at least if we get the Anglia back or you collect the insurance. We couldn't even afford to hire a bicycle. Mummy, can I have a drink of water? No, you can't. Get back to bed. Go on. Late spring, but the cigarettes are coming up all right. Darling, give me a fight about the car. I thought for a moment that... Managed somehow. Was managed in the end. Yeah. You know we've had to walk it. Good morning, my love. You look like the very breath of spring. See me at 5.30. Rear Admiral Pennington on deck. Just leaving. Good morning, Mr. Pennington. The buses are becoming impossible. That's why I bought it. Well, of course, it's not just the buses. I'm always pleased to see you, Mr. Cummings. On time. Oh, I'm really sorry about the hold-up this morning, Mr. Pennington. Uh, what is it you want to show me? Ah, now, something really out of the ordinary. Hmm? Uh, 
My sample case went astray, but I've got one here somewhere. So here it is. Easy squeeze shampoo, you see? Now, this is something really out of the ordinary in the way of packaging. Burgess, I suppose you'd say they've always been uh, rather conservative. <laughs> I suppose that's the word. Uh, thank you, Horace Gummings, thank you. Any, uh, any literature, sir? Yes, but I'd like to add a point or two myself. You see, this shampoo, rather, is packaging. Uh, Miss Cummings, uh, I haven't got very much time. Might I make just one point? We know each other well. Please don't try to sell me so hard. Oh, I'm sorry if I gave you that impression. Now, I... don't apologize, please. Just don't be late next time. You know, as well as I do, there are half a dozen new shampoos on the market. And one's as good as another. Yes, All right. I, I'd like to try Burgess. You've given me a sample. Now, let's have the leaflet. There we are. And good day, Mr. Cummings. Good day, Mr. Pennington. Waiting for Cummings. Come along in. You wanted to see me, Mr. Verger? I won't ask you to sit down. I shan't keep you long. <laughs> Live on our feet, the salesman's motto. Cummings, <laughs> I'm uh, virtually taking over the sales and production side from my father. He's not retiring. Well, he'll be doing board meetings and so on. You won't be seeing very much of him. Point is, Cummings, I think I can get quite a bit more out of our sales division. Uh, I'm sure there's nothing I can't cope with, Mr. Verger. There's your sales figures for last month. Uh, difficult month in my area, Mr. Berger. It's not so wealthy as some of the others, you know. They, uh, they spend a lot of Christmas and, and then they go cold. There's your pre-Christmas sales. Not much better. Well, I think I can surprise you, Mr. Berger. And we've had a lot of complaints. Complaints? Yes, you've been late for appointments. <laughs> well, it has happened, I know, Mr. Berger, once or twice. It's damn difficult getting around these I mean, days. That's it's not just a question of getting around. There are new methods of salesmanship today. Convincing people to buy instead of trying to pressure them. Oh, well, I know, I, I You've know. You've got to be twice as effective. There are a number of very astute young men coming forward in this business, quick, confident. I know, and I realize that. It's because we can't stand still. We've got to do better, move faster, even to keep up. Exactly, Mr. Berger, exactly. That's why I bought a car. Well, that's a step in the right direction. When did you get it? Last week. Good. It'll make all the difference, Mr. Berger. I hope so, Cummings. We can't any of us afford to stand still. No, uh, that's all. Good night, Cummings. Good night, Mr. Berger. Hello, Sergeant. Oh, this is Cummings here. Any news? News about my car? Sorry, old boy. Sorry. I'll be working overtime again, Mr. Spink. Sorry, but you just can't help selling this easy squeeze. Scientifically, though. Scientifically. Who's that? Hey, oh, it's you, is it? Oh, I've already told you. 
I didn't see nothing. I don't know nothing. Yes, but I thought I'd ask you again, Alfie. Yeah. You've no right in here if I don't want you. I know, I know, Alfie, but you're the only one that can help me. Anyway, I don't know what you're making all the fuss about. I reckon you've got a nice cushy number over at Burgess. They'd buy you another car, so what's the difference? Don't be bloody silly. I'm not someone working my own pitch. Any time they like, they can... What's... what's that you're giving them? Oh, special stuff for you. They're nice. Yeah, oh, I've got something better than that. <laughs> yeah, look at terrapins. Eh? They're better than fish. They, they can walk. If I was to tell you anything, you'd, you'd only have the police around. No, I wouldn't, Alfie. I wouldn't. I wouldn't tell anyone. Yeah, anyway, I'm not saying I know nothing. I never saw or took your car. But you could try asking down at the Victory Cafe. Asking who? Asking who, Alfie? Asking who?
Given me up for lost. It's after nine. <laughs> Fourteen hour day. <laughs> I must speak to the union about it. <laughs> Berger called me in tonight. Tell. Told me I was nobody good. Did you tell me how to call? Oh, yes, yeah, sure. He was delighted. I didn't tell him I'd lost the bloody thing. <laughs> My sample case was in it, too. I phoned the police three times, not a sign. Well, I haven't had much time. I don't think they're interested. I said they get nearly all of them back. Anyway, there's no need to take it so hard. That old car doesn't turn up. We can simply claim the insurance and buy another one. That'll fix Berger. Or won't we? Johnny. But you can't drive a car without insuring it. Oh, yes, you can. Anyone can drive a car anywhere. Third party risk, that's all you need, in case you knock some old codger down in the street. Johnny, well, why did... That's all we had. If I'd insured fully comprehensive, it would have cost another 17 pounds 10, and I thought we'd save it. Not even that's true. It wasn't 17 pounds 10 in the kitty. So we'll be paying out 20 quid a month to the bank till God knows when for, for nothing. What the hell are we going to do? Just to wait, I suppose. Give it a few days, it may be all right. That's the trouble. The longer we wait, the less chance there is of getting it back. Well, what else can we do? I don't know. We can't get it back. I don't know. Johnny? What are you thinking about? Johnny? Was it that boy Tars? Was it Tommy Tars? Listen, Alfie. We can't help you if you won't help us. Stay with him till the doctor's seen him. Well, sir. He may decide to talk later on, or he may not. But surely you can see why this I was done. I can see that the old man isn't going to make a statement now. Well, Inspector, he talked to me. Now he wishes he hadn't. Well, I've given you a direct lead to my car, haven't well, I? This proves that Towers must have had something to do with it. You've been very helpful, Mr. Cummings. But proof means witnesses, evidence and statements. But surely, it must have been Towers. I'll question him. How long will that take? Call for you, Inspector. They found some of the stuff from Sheldon's warehouse. Thomas here. You'll be hearing from us in due course, Mr. Cummings. Yes? Where is it from? Are you quite sure? Yeah. 
Yes, sir. Rather late, I'm afraid. Traffic jammed up everywhere. I'd have taken a taxi. Oh, Mr. Silverson told me to tell you he won't be seeing you this morning. Well, I have an appointment with him. He's got to see me. Got to? Well, if he's here, surely he can spare me a few minutes. You're an hour late. Mr. Silverson, a very busy man. I've already told you I better have and a job. So am here. I. And you look it. not to go to other garages now, Mrs. Hurst, didn't I? I mean, a car like this, you want to keep nice. You want to keep it with people who really care about the job. See? Uh, Cliff, when can we give Mrs. Hurst Jaguar a service? Pull up, Lionel, till Tuesday. On oh, Tuesday, I have to be at Newmarket. Surely we can fit an old customer like Mrs. Hurst in. Look, don't you worry, dear. You bring it in first thing tomorrow morning. I'll manage it somehow. <laughs> So much, Mr. Meadows. It's a great pleasure. Great pleasure. Ten gallons, charge to account, Cliff. Won't you come in? When are you getting out of here? You tell me, and then we'll both know. I told you. I told you any time. I know I'm not supposed to come around here, Mr. Meadows, but something's happened. Well, you're a big boy, Tommy. You're a working man. You've got to use your own judgment sometimes, eh? <laughs> Business, Jackie, out. Yes. Jackie. Darling, how many times have I told you? Don't smoke before you've had your breakfast. It's bad for your health. <laughs> you never listen, do you, naughty? <laughs> Now then, Tommy, what's this something that's happened? Well, a fella came round to victory last night. Oh. All right, crumb he was. And Freddie comes round and he said he'd seen him yakking to Alfie. You know, that old codger that sells the papers outside the George. Well, we went round to Alfie's and after a bit of an up and a down, he admits this fellow was the owner of that new angler I stole. So what? So, so we done Alfie. I mean, we done his room, Mr. Meadows. We didn't hurt the old codger. Just done his place over a bit, you know. Tore it up a bit. Now the coppers have been round here this morning with this peanut. What peanut? The bloke whose car in it. How could Alfie have put him onto you, Tommy? Because he saw me nick his car. I took it from outside Burgess. Come here, Tommy. I thought you were a big boy. But Alfie won't I thought I Alfie. told you never to lift anything within five miles around here. Don't you ever learn? Oh, look at that. Bright in the veneer. You'd never believe it, would you? Uh. Some of these young tarts, they just don't bloody care. <laughs> Pick it up, Tommy. Yeah, sure, sir. <laughs> you see, they never learn. They all think they know better than I do. But you've only got to look at them and look at me, haven't you? You see, I've... I've got a legitimate business here, Tommy. I've got nearly 200 account customers, and I've got twice as much cash on the side. Why? Because I've learnt that money makes money, Tommy boy. Never do anything silly, and you could be all right. Your trouble is you just don't think. You want to think, listen, learn, and don't go doing anything silly again. You see? How about it, Tommy? I thought I said out, Jackie. You rotten bastard. Language, darling. It doesn't come nice from a young girl like you. If he wants to live, he's gonna get hurt sometime. Anyway, why should you worry? Hmm? Uh, You'll always do what I say, won't you, Jackie? Because uh, I know how to handle people, you see. Um, clean this place up for me, Jackie, will you? 
I like to see everything nice and clean and tidy. Plates, tires, engine number? Spray? Spray? What for? There are thousands of them that color. Spray it, boy. Spray it. Listen, Regan. You don't do this week what you did last, do you? You want to think, boy. Get moving. Keep organized. See? I'm just going to water the horse. said he wanted to see you as soon as you came in. See what? Didn't say. But I fancy it's about Silverstone. I heard them on the phone. He really blew his top. All right, I'll go. I'd go now if I were you. <coughs> You're trying to say it isn't fair. I know it isn't fair, no. But I... I it's nothing about you. No, I know, Alfie, and you won't say anything, will you? To anybody, any ma. No. Because, you see, you're just a useless old man. You understand, Alfie? You mustn't go bothering people, never. Because nobody wants you, not even that nosy bastard from Burgess. You're finished, Alfie. You've no more use in this world than these. <laughs> After that Silverstone business, I have no alternative. We can't afford to offend people. We'll have to make way for somebody who can do the job with confidence. But, Mr. Berger, this pink doesn't know the people. I'm sorry. You can fill in in the dispatch department for a week or two until you find another job. It's the best I can offer. Get me the export file, will you? C to G. Burgess says you'll be taking over my area. Yes. I'm sorry about that. Will um, you be getting another one? No, not, uh, not right away. Well, 
Shouldn't take long to put them in the picture. No time like the present. Shall I sit down? Inspector at the local station. Well, open the door and let him in, Cliff. Mr. Meadows? In the office. Good evening, gentlemen. A busy day, Mr. Meadows? Well, the usual. Still, I've always got time to do somebody a favor. If you want any petrol, he'll uh, fix it for you. My name's Thomas, Gate End Station. This is Mr. Cummings. He works for Burgess. Do you know the place? Burgess, opposite the George. Mm. Just a routine inquiry. I believe Mr. Cummings saw you talking to a newspaper seller, Alfie Barnes, this evening outside the George. This is the man you saw, Mr. Cummings. Yes. And I recognize that car. Things slack at Burgess these days? Yes, I was there. I go there quite often. Can I buy you a drink sometime? I should explain, Mr. Meadows. I'm making inquiries about a car theft. I wanted a statement from Alfie Barnes. I can't get that statement because Alfie's dead. Gassed himself this evening, shortly after you spoke to him. Maybe I could have a word with you. Yes, of course, you can have a word with me, yes. Why don't you come in? Nothing for sale here. Yeah? Any time, any time at all, Inspector, that I can be of any help, don't you hesitate to drop in. I'm usually here, and if there's any... Good night, Mr. Meadows. Good night, Inspector. I'm not leaving it anyway. But he was with Alfie. He says he often bought a paper there. And does he know Tommy Towers? He sells him petrol regularly. Sir, can I interrupt? But I told you. I saw his car, the same car that was at the cafe where I spoke to Towers. The whole thing fits. It's obvious. There are a few points that haven't escaped me. Well, I know that he went for Alfie. And I know he's got my car. You know nothing. I know nothing yet. I think you should let me deal with this in my own way. But Inspector, Meadows... the check on Meadows just came through, sir. No record and nothing known. Can I give you a lift, Mr. Cummings? No, thanks. It's... I told you I don't like your drinking. Why don't you leave it alone? You don't try and learn, kid. Your trouble. Somehow you you just don't try and learn, do you? Eh? What are you after, Jackie? I've given you this place, haven't I? Where would you be if I hadn't found you? I'd be back at the remand home. Yes. 
You don't want that, do you? Sometimes I think I'd be better off there. What's the matter, darling? I'm bored. Oh. What do you want? I want another drink. You know, Jackie, kid, you don't need to be bored with me. next time. Sorry. I thought you'd want to know. He's still outside. Who's still outside? That little narc who brought the coppers here. What are you ones? I want my car. Do you think I've got it? I know you've got it. The police don't think so, do they, Cliff? No. They will. By the time I've finished. You realize I could have you for breaking an entrance, don't you? I should think you'd probably get about two years. So I'm a reasonable sort of a fellow, you know? Have a look around for your car. Go on, try and find it. Come on. Right, are you satisfied? Now get out. Cliff. Not on the face, Cliff. Use your loaf. Meadows' guys I was shown a broken door panel, and they claim he attacked one of them. Are you joking? 
I'm sorry, Mrs. Cummings, but I'm afraid he walked right into it. I went back to get my car. And it wasn't worth it. Mrs. Cummings, your husband thinks this man Meadows has got his car. He may be right, but he's made a ruddy mess of things by interfering. I'm sorry this had to happen. I've sent for a doctor. Keep your husband quiet and keep him at home and out of trouble. I can find my own way out. Good night. Good night. Johnny, you shouldn't be getting out. The doctor said two days at least, and then he... Well, he didn't suggest a couple of months in the south of France. I've got to get back to Burgess. No, you don't. I'm you practically don't. out of a job now. I've got to hang on to what's left. I'll ring Burgess. No, don't go away. Wait a minute. I want to talk to you. Um, give me a line. tell you about last night. Please, Johnny, it doesn't matter. I don't care about that old car, not now. You don't care about it. I do. It's right there in front of my eyes. Don't you remember all the time and effort and hard cash we put into getting that car? That's why I went back to Meadows Garage. Because that car is worth it. I have to have it, Anne. Don't you understand? It's going to make all the difference. I know I'm right. And the damn thing's right there in front of me all the time. Yes, Johnny, I can see it all right. If you want to know, I see a whole lot more than one car. I see a whole procession of cars. Everything in life you ever wanted that was going to make all the difference. What do you mean? The pipe dreams, Johnny. It's like those glasses you wear. You don't really need them. And no more real than that photographic studio you were going to start. Every penny you ever got from the army thrown away. Now, wait a minute, Anne. That's not fair. You always said yourself it was a good idea. If I'd only gone into it alone instead of taking on a partner. Oh, Johnny, it didn't work. It wasn't practical. It's like our cottage in the country. Every summer a new plan, a new set of drawings. Another dream. This one's going to turn into a nightmare. Let it go, Johnny, before something worse happens to you. And to us. I don't understand. I could have done these things. I only made one mistake. I I didn't hang on. I didn't see it through. Because you're not made that way. You're not tough enough, Johnny. You're not meant to push and shove your way through life. And I don't want you to, Johnny. I love you just as you are. I don't want anything more. I'll have to get down to Burgess. Look at the time, I'll... I'll get something to eat later on. Ten gross of that lotion. Right. so much stuff, I've used up my samples. You should know what I need, old boy. Can you apply, Jimmy? One of these? That's right. A full one? That's the ticket. Thank you. 
And you can tell Berger he can have his bloody job as well. Darling, how much longer are you going to be? You're not even dressed yet. Didn't I tell you we're going out tonight? I don't want to go to that club anymore. What's wrong with the club? Those tarts are too fat to trot around with nothing on. Cut it out, will you, Jackie? I've told you I don't like you drinking that stuff. It's so bad for the health. Ah, oh, grow up, will you? Look, kid, doesn't it mean anything to you that I want to take you out? Hmm? Listen to me. Don't you want to have fun like we used to? Don't you want to look nice, eh? Some logbooks for you, Mr. Well, why the hell didn't you give the cliff downstairs? He wants cash for them. What do you mean, cash? You get paid when they're fixed. Oh, I've got to pack it in for a few days. I need the money. What's this, six? You're getting a better price somewhere else, are you? No. Honest. I, I couldn't get no more. The coppers are all around the yards. Something stirred them up. They're all over the place. Honest. A mate of mine got pulled in. Gate end station. He won't talk, but... Yes, yes. All right. Uh... Take him down the stairs, Cliff, and give him the cash. And clear out of here, see? Out. And keep right away till you hear from me. Where'd you get this? I don't know. I've got lots of stuff. With Burgess printed all over it? Something goes wrong, that bloody salesman crops up. Where did you get it? Toby gave him me. He found a whole box full of that car he took. You bloody little fool. What are you trying to do? You, Tommy, and that creeping salesman. You're going to ruin me between you. Don't you realize this stuff could be traced? What's it to me? What's it to you? You? What are you, Jackie, without me, eh? I'll tell you what. You'll be doing time for running away from the home. You'd be on your back in some cheap tip. You'd be trotting around some crummy club like one of those tarts you don't want to go and see. <laughs> Stay there, Jackie. There. That's where you belong. Oh, well, never mind. Job will turn up. Seven makes nine. So how long before they're ready? Well, a couple of weeks, that is. Oh, you're still working the rule, then, are you? What's the trouble, Lionel? Look, all I want is to be enough to waste any time. I want this lot finished quick and out. What's the trouble? There's no trouble, boy. I'm looking after you. I'm telling you what to do. And looking after Mr. Lionel Meadows. Oh, no. No, not me, boy. I'm in the clear. All the time. This is your racket, Regan. Me? I'm in the garage business. Legitimate business.
relax. Have a fan. You asked me. You said I could come any time. Oh, sure. You're going to stay. What'll he do when he finds out? He doesn't own you. I'll tell him where he gets off. I won't let him touch you. Who is it? It's coming. Well, look who's here. The lipstick man. What do you want? I want to talk to you about my car. Why well, don't you get out? That old man Alfie told me that you took it. Yeah, look what happened to him. Yeah, at least no man is dead and you're in it, Tommy. Get out of it! Not until you've told me where my car is and who's got it. I'll have to tell the police, but I'll keep you out of it. Look, mister, I'm no cross, no split on anybody. It was Meadows, wasn't it? Leave me alone! Get out of here! Jackie! with you when you go. I'm in the way, aren't I? He said you had a little boy and a girl. On the way in the taxi, he told me. And she'll have to stay the night. I had to help her, whoever she was. Were well, you thinking that she might help you? Well, yes, she might. But why didn't you take her to the police? Because she wouldn't go. She's as scared of them as she is of Meadows. Yes, Meadows will be looking for her, and you bring her here. Maybe he doesn't know where she is. Johnny, I'll give her this tea, then you've got to talk to her. She can't stay here. Nice place you've got here. What do you pay? Fourpence a week. You get out of here. You should know better, taking young girls for taxi rides. You ought to come and work for me. I need a boy to sweep out. You're just about the right size. You get out or I'll call the police. Oh, no, you won't. You'll go and fetch that girl. <laughs> Yes, Inspector. He's gone now. All right. 
get it out, Mrs. Cummings. I mean it. I heard you talking to the police. Jackie, where are you going? Man, what? I'm not going back to Lionel Meadows. You can tell him that. Busy day, Mr. Meadows. You must be coining some brass. What is it this time? It's about a girl. Don't tell me that crazy little lipstick peddler's been shooting his mouth off about me again. So far, I've only spoken to his wife. And all I've come to say to you is this. If there's any more violence, or threats of violence to anyone, I'll take you in. On the word of a rat! Look, Inspector, do I have to spend the rest of my life answering for that loose-mouthed little salesman? Why don't you lay off me? There's only one fact about this case, and that is that this here is a legitimate business. And I don't know, I would have thought that it was your job to protect all legitimate business. My advice to you, Mr. Meadows, is to stick pretty close to your legitimate business from now on. No, Johnny, I'm going to have my say now. I spoke to the inspector on the phone. And he said he wouldn't be responsible for any of us if you continue to interfere. Interfere? Interfere with what? What the hell does he mean, interfere? He said he was going to put an end to the whole business. Exactly, that's just it, don't you see? The whole business is all that interests him. He doesn't give a damn about our car. I don't give a damn about our car. Listen, Johnny, I've tried to tell you as clearly as I could. I'll take you without the car, without a job. But I'm not taking this. If you don't promise me not to go near Meadows or, or any of them ever again, I'm taking the children away. I'm getting out, do you understand? Don't go near Meadows again. Doorway. Get back to Meadows. Open the door, Tommy. Tommy. He went for me. He tried to get my face. That lousy Lennon Pete Not one of them came back. I came back. I said I wouldn't let him touch you. But I did. I didn't know what to do. What have you come back for, Jackie? Where have you been? That fellas place, Cummings. It was outside. You've been a peanut. He got me away from Meadows. You shouldn't have done that, Jackie. He's in with the coppers. He's crazy. What if he is? He's the only one that's ever helped me. You think I'm a peanut, don't you? What are we going to do, Jackie? You know more than me. Do I? That isn't what you used to say, Tommy. I find I don't know too much. Why did you come back to me, Jackie? Are you staying? You tell me.
that Mr. Cummins? Yes, it is. Now I'll come right over. Yes, now. They're going to tell me all they know about Meadows. And they must know where he's got the car. You're not going. You're not going, Johnny. And please give me this one chance. After this, I'll do whatever you want. I'll, I'll call in the police once I know for sure. It'll be too late, then. But, darling, this may be my last chance. I've got to take it. This time, I've got to hang on. I've got to see it through. I won't be here when you come back. I mean it, Johnny. Want it. Don't say I ever warned you. You know, Meadows, you're in dead trouble now, boy. Where the hell have you been? We're now rang up the bloke Cummings. I said we'd tell him. I said we'd tell him all about Meadows, the whole lot. If he left us out of it. But if Christ, why did you do that? Because he can help us. Cummings, he can't even help himself. Meadows would cut it to pieces, sure, oh. Clint. Cummings can go to the police and he can have Meadows put away. He's our only chance, Tommy. Jackie, she's back at Tommy's. And that's not all. I've seen her on the phone. And that little narc's just got there, too. Well, they're gonna shop us, Lionel. Listen, do you think I'm gonna let a couple of little kids and a lousy lipstick peddler take apart everything I've got? Do you think that, do you, Cliff? Do you know how many years I've spent planning and fixing this business? I'm not a one-timer, you know. I'm not a chancer. I'm in business, boy. I'm in big business. And I'm not going to let any lousy bastard pull me down. All right, go easy. Alison, get round to Regan's and get every car out of there. But if we go round Doesn't there... matter where you drive them, just drive them out. I'll get McKinnon on the phone and tell him to get out of town. McKinnon, I can put you inside whenever I like, and I can make it as tough as I like. Are you trying to threaten me? I've come off at McKinnon. I know Meadows is behind this car racket. I know you've had dealings with him. You make a complete statement. I'll make it easy for you. I don't think I heard you quite right. How do don't I Don't waste my time. You'll have to talk sooner or later. I've made you an offer. Think it over. Sorry, sir, but Mr. Cummings is waiting outside. Says it's most urgent. Stay with him, Sergeant. He's got some thinking to do. Good day, Mr. Cummings. Something that can't wait. Here's an address for you. A workshop that deals in stolen cars. Kinnan. Oh, he left, did he? When? Oh, I see. No. Oh, there's no message. Is that anything you want? 
Some of you boys are not doing so well, Mr. Regan. Do you know Mr. Lionel Meadows? You seem to know me, mister. Inspector Thomas, Gate End Station. It's drafty in here. Perhaps you'll come along to my office and answer some questions. You wouldn't want any grease on your nice upholstery. I'll have a look at it. Okay. Someone's took them off, I must have done. Everything away, just a couple of wrecks left Is this one, Regans? Did you bring this here? Well, yeah, I dumped it up the street. I had to have some. Get it out of here. But Lionel, you can't leave it out there. Get it out of here. Jackie, they're all too. Closing Saturday, Mr. Regan. See, everyone knows me. I give Mr. Regan jobs, panel beat, spray. I'm glad somebody looks after him. I'll help you any time I can, Inspector. But if you want to talk with me, get him out of here. Mr. Meadows, I've come here to give you a warning. Don't leave this district until you hear from me. Don't you worry yourself about me, Inspector. You can afford to waste your time with your little friend here. I've got my work to see to. That's all, Mr. Meadows. I'm going in there. Get that bastard out of here! I'll come in with you, Inspector. My car must be in there. Look, I'll tell you. In 24 hours, I'm going to have enough information to put Meadows away on a dozen but charges. what about my car? I'm not just working for you, Mr. But if it's Cullen. in there, it must be evidence. I'm going to get all the evidence I want. About my car? I'm going to get Meadows for a hundred cars. Oh, yes, you're going to wrap up the whole business. Mr. Cummings, you've been very helpful, and I've acted on your information. Now, will you please leave this to me? To hell with leaving it to you. Leave it to you, and I'll never see my car again. So what? So what makes your car so important? I'm holding a man who's going to talk. Talk about every stolen car Meadows ever had. I couldn't care less about your car. My job is to go for the major charge. I'm not going to put Meadows away for six months when by waiting a few hours I can get him for six years. All right, Inspector, you've said it, you've said it now. I know what you want, a big haul, legitimate promotion. I'm not going to argue with you. And I'll tell you something else. Stay away from here or I'll take you in as well. All right, Dawson. I'll get this out. You leave it where it is! But why, thank you! I'll tell you why. Because he thinks it's here. That stupid little bastard thinks it's here. And he's gonna come back for it. And this time, I'll kill him. Wait a minute. And I'll stick his body in his precious car, set fire to it, and I'll dump the whole bloody lot! Tommy, we gotta get out of here. Do you think we could just take off? Get on a bike and go on to Mum? We've got nowhere to go. Cup of tea? What you're gonna do? I wanna know, mate. Listen to me, Lionel. What about the car? Aren't we gonna get it out of here or we gotta go? It'll be dark soon. Let me drive it out. It's staying here! 
What's the matter with you, Cliff? You scared? You scared of what that lipstick peddler can do? Listen, you don't have to worry, Cliff boy. I'm getting another garage next year, didn't I tell you? Listen, you could be manager. Think of that manager. Perks and a percentage. <laughs> no. No, you want to get out, don't you? You want to get back in room with the mob. Well, go on then, you useless slob. I don't need you. Your kind's ten a penny. Get out of my place! Think. He's too scared, just like we are. Meadows talked his way out of it. He always will. But what if we went to the police, Tommy? And you'd be inside. And what do I say? Please, Inspector, I stole a car. Lock me up if you can't touch Meadows. It's no use, Jackie. It won't work. You waiting for somebody? I heard what the boys are saying. You want your car. It's none of my business, but you should leave these people alone. The police will catch up with them. There's nothing to be afraid. I'm afraid of these people. They care for nobody. They will destroy themselves. You should go home.
Jeez. Well, what are you waiting for? leave you to get the other 99. Let the kid go. About opening those doors. I'm going home. Dawson.
marching home again, oh yeah, oh yeah. I'll give him a swinging welcome then, oh yeah, oh yeah. The girls are screaming, the boys are shouting, the old folks too will all turn up and they'll all go mad. 